Well, it seems that uh, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are so drunk with power that they can't control themselves. It's sad because these demons that possess them, you know, they manifest and they've got to be fed. You know, these are animals. These are, you know, these demons that are inside of these two individuals. I mean, they they are, you know, they're like wild animals that need to be fed, that have to be fed. And uh, if they're not fed, um, they can make your life very miserable um, and torment you. And um, so without question, um, just like a serial killer or anybody else, they have to continue to do it or the demons will torment them. Um, and so they get some kind of relief when they, um, when they, you know, feed that beast within them. And, um, you know, that's why you never see Donald Trump ever, very rarely ever with any real joy or any real smile on his face. He's always depressed all the time. And that's because, you know, not only is he a pedophile, he's, I mean, he's actually, I can't go as far as saying he's been with his own children or been with his daughter, but, um, you know, people don't say things like this because they're so afraid someone like Donald Trump will sue him or whatever. But um, it's actually in the news right now that he actually is um, being accused of, um, of rape and even a rape of a 12-year-old. Um, but what happens is people like um, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, and Donald Trump, and, you know, the like, what happens is they get so full of uh, power, um, and that power obviously is demonic, you know, that's Satan, that not only do they lie right in your face and and, and have no conscience of it they could care less i mean they just they lie like they're telling the truth but they feel like they're above the law that they can buy anything they want and this is exactly who these two candidates are they are very they're both monsters they're both monsters without question um you look at both of them they both have real anger issues both of them do. Hillary Clinton has been known for beating up Bill so badly that he's, he's actually, in a lot of ways, scared of her. Um, but um, a lot of this is how they're controlled. You know, the demons control um, someone like um, Donald Trump. He's controlled by demons. But then Donald Trump is controlling others under him. And so it's, it's like a power... Uh, it's like a, um, you know, like a, uh, a power, how do I want to say, a power play or something to that effect. Um, and so it goes all the way up to the top of the pyramid, but basically these are stronger demons that are at the top of the pyramid and really, really powerful demons. But then they have lesser and lesser, you know, demons that come down the, the, the power structure. And so this is the way they work. These demons are literally working through these uh, individuals like Donald Trump and the Clintons. But what it is, is it's a whole complete sex ring. It's a ring. And they're all connected. And it's just crazy um, that, that this is actually happens that this goes on you know it was one it's one thing for these things to be going on in in secret or in dark places that you know you never meet those people or you never hear about them altogether but when when they start running for president you know when they actually come right up in your face and ask you to vote for them and they're the they're the worst kinds of criminals i mean Donald Trump couldn't couldn't tell the truth if it for the save his life. He is I mean there's so many pictures on the internet with him with young girls. I mean just the way he in the pictures that he where he's holding his own daughter is so promiscuous. It's just like 
you don't hold your daughter that way. You don't talk about your daughter um, in a way that is um, demeaning. Like, you know, he, he said about his daughter that if she, you know, I'd date her. If she wasn't my daughter, I'd date her. Who talks like that? Um, I remember hearing about this man that was um, invited to go to an, uh, uh, basically a uh, elite um, get-together. It wasn't a meeting like a business meeting or anything. Up in the Alps, I think it was, or in some area where they were skiing or whatever. And he was he went into this really expensive condo or whatever, and and he took his daughter with him. And he's never been to a place like this, never been invited to go to any place like this before. And he, he didn't know what he was getting himself into. And he invited his daughter to go. And one night they were at this party and um, this old guy says, while he's sitting there, he says, boy, I'd, I'd like to uh, take that girl to bed. And all of a sudden he looks over at the old guy and he says, hey, he said, that's my daughter. And the old man said, I don't much care who she is. I want to take her to bed. Now do you understand, people, who we're dealing with? That's who Donald Trump is. That's who Hillary Clinton is. There are so many <laughs> connected to this, well, for the lack of a better word, it's nothing more than a trafficking or a sex ring. They are the worst kind of criminals. They are the worst kind of criminals because they come right up in our faces making us think they're good people. I mean, Donald Trump right now is being said that he is, that he's a good man. I mean, it's just the opposite. It's just the opposite. And by the way, anybody that calls Donald Trump Mr. Trump, that's code word. Did you know that? That means they're in, they're in on it. You know, they know about him. They know who he is. They know the power that he wields, and that's why they call him Mr. Trump. If you ever noticed on, um, like, The Apprentice, um, there were certain ones that would call him Mr. Trump, especially the, the women. They all know. See, he, he frequents the Holly, I mean, the, um, the uh, what do you call it, the Playboy Mansion all the time. He's always at the Playboy Mansion. His uh, wife is scared to death of him. She's terrified of him. And uh, everything she says about him, she is groomed to say. Do you remember one time Donald Trump said something to the effect, he said she wasn't, co she wasn't coached or forced? Who talks like that? But someone that knows, that is very intimate with that kind of knowledge. Because Donald Trump does do those things. He forces and he coaches to get his way. And he gets anything he wants. And you know what happens is, the more they get, the more they want. That's the way it works, people. They get a taste and they want more. They get some more, they want more. You know, I really do believe that there is a lot of code, a lot of code language um, in, in songs like Stairway to Heaven. Because this heaven in the song Stairway to Heaven is talking about a heaven that doesn't exist. It's a heaven of the Illuminati. It's a heaven of Hollywood. It's a heaven. In other words, you can have anything you want. That's what they consider to be heaven. And the code language in the song Stairway to Heaven, oh, not, whole, not, not Stairway to Heaven, excuse me, that's the wrong song. I'm talking about Hotel California. Hotel California is, is without question code for these, uh, these goings-on that happen in Hollywood and um, 
not only is Satanism and Satanic going on in that, you know, in that song, but when they talk about stabbing it with their steely knife, you just can't kill the beast. You know, they talk about we are programmed. I'll have to get the lyrics to it, but um, we are programmed to something to receive. Um, you can check in anytime you like, but you can never leave. They're living it up at the Hotel California. What a nice surprise. Bring your alibis. Well, you have to bring alibis because the things that go on in that place, and it's not just one hotel. It's not just that hotel. It's not even the idea of just one. See, this was all code. This was code. This song was code. And people, God is going to reveal these things. He's blowing the lid off this stuff because he said in the last days he would bring this stuff to light. And you know what? You say, well, Brother Joseph, aren't you afraid? No. You know why? Because if the Lord, God before me, who can be against me? And the reason why I'm bringing this to light is because, the reason I'm willing to, to bring it to light is because there are a lot of people out there that don't know who Donald Trump is. They don't know who they're voting for. They don't know who Hillary Clinton is, people. I mean, you don't have to go very far to look at Hillary Clinton's past dealing with her drug ring, you know, um, the drug smuggling into the United States. Her and Bill Clinton ran a drug smuggling uh, business, quote unquote. And um, just terrible, terrible things, you know. And anybody that tried to expose them, they killed them. They got rid of them. But you know, everybody that lies, somewhere they're going to get caught. And what the Lord has taught me is that if it's not bad enough in the eyes of the Illuminati, if it's not bad enough when they get caught, then they'll do what they can to cover it up. The brotherhood will come together and they'll cover it up. But if it's so bad they can't cover it up, you know what they say to them? They let them rot in prison. You know what they say? They say, you got too greedy. That's what they say. Good enough for you. You broke code. You got too greedy. So their level of, of you know, how bad is bad or how good is good their their judgment is so twisted that they believe that being like incestuous relationships is not breaking code if you don't get caught see that's why they put their finger in front of their lips and they they say you know just don't get caught you can do anything you want to do just don't get caught see this is the secret this is the world secret this is the biggest kept secret is it, do anything you want, just don't get caught. Are you listening, people? They were these, 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 this stuff was going on when Jesus was on the earth too. Jesus knew all about it. And there were certain words that Jesus used to describe it too. He, he, he did, he, Jesus wasn't blind. Jesus knew what, what kind of, uh, individuals were around him. He said they were full of dead men's bones. I mean, the Pharisees of Jesus' day would go and, and rape um, a woman. And then the next day, they would be the ones stoning a woman for adultery. That's who they were. I mean, you think that, I mean... Jesus had taller or Jesus had uh, restraint. <laughs> I mean, if we knew the things Jesus knew and he still didn't sacrifice, that he still didn't destroy them, that he that he held back, because all he had to do, he could have consumed them with the words of his mouth if he wanted to. And he held back. You know why he did that? Because he didn't come to destroy men's lives. He didn't come to condemn. So even though Jesus knew the awful uh 
you know, heinous things that these individuals were doing around him. He knew about it. You know, we're, we're talking the Sanhedrin. We're talking the ones that were supposed to be the holiest in Jerusalem. These were the ones that were committing these acts. Okay? You understand what I'm saying here? Just like the Pope is supposed to be the most holy in the eyes of the Catholic Church. Listen, people. Uh, he is one of the most vile individuals on the planet. He's a beast, according to the book of Revelation. He's a beast. The false prophet, he's a beast. So, you know, Jesus wasn't uh, blind. He knew. And not only that, but he wasn't deaf. He could hear their thoughts. Jesus wasn't afraid. He walked right in the midst of them. And they knew that he knew. That's why they, that's why they wanted to get rid of him. Because he's the light. And everywhere he went, he shined. And they couldn't hide it. They knew. In fact, Jesus said at one point, he said to him, he says, you know who I am. He said that to the Pharisees. He said, you know who I am. You know I'm, you know I'm God. You know I'm the Son of God. They were so demon-possessed. Their minds had been taken over by such demon possession that those demons literally became one with them. And so when Jesus said, you're vipers, you're snakes, he was literally calling them snakes and vipers, scorpions, because they had literally become one with demons. And that's what we're dealing with today. You know, you look at someone like Henry Kissinger, oh my goodness, the devil manifests on that guy's face. But you're going to see more and more that they're not going to be able to hold it back anymore, and it's going to get worse. They're going to become the beasts that they are. See, Donald Trump has an appetite, and the more he feeds it, the stronger that thing becomes inside him. And he's going to, you know, he's going to expose himself. You know, there's only a matter of time before you expose yourself, just like Hillary. She'll expose herself. But see, the world will forgive them and let it go. You know why? Because the world is just as bad as they are. They are just as hypocritical. They are just as self-righteous. And so if they have to admit Donald Trump is wrong or Hillary's wrong and they're evil, then they're going to admit they're evil. That's why nobody wants to expose them. That's why nobody wants to, you know what I'm saying? And the more darker it becomes, the more evil it becomes. People are feeding their appetites. They're going to, that, the devil, the beast within them is going to get stronger and stronger and stronger to where they're going to worship the beast. And, and you wouldn't believe the heinous crimes that are going to go on on this planet. Really, people, we're going back. The, the, the world is going back to the dark ages. They're going back to barbarism. They're going back to a savage uh, condition. Really? It's really happening because demons are taking over. The world is becoming demon possessed. Are you listening? So, you know, if you ever listen to that video that I have on YouTube, which has now almost 400,000 uh, views on it, uh, the one where we're exposing the Vatican. Uh, the Vatican and the goings on there, um, you, the atrocities, the things that go on. I mean, just look at the Catholic Church. They're guilty of the murder of saints, uh, so many saints. Uh, and it's, it's still going on today. I mean, who do you think is behind ISIS? Who do you think is behind the Muslims? It's the Catholic Church, people. It's just another sect of the Catholic Catholic Church. This all has to do with Rome. This is the Roman Empire. This is not just the Roman Empire because the Roman Empire was steeped in the Egyptian and Babylonian teachings. But Rome is taking over the earth again. Just like it did back there. And I'm telling you people, 
if we're going to be like Jesus in this hour, we are the lights. And the world doesn't want light. They don't want the light. But we've got nothing to be afraid of. Why do we fear? Why would we be afraid of what man can do unto us? Amen? I mean, if God is going to use us to expose evil so people can get saved, so people can get delivered of their sin, what are we going to do, shrink back? Are we going to stop now? No, we're going to go forward and we're going to see some prisoners get delivered. Amen? Some captives get freed. It's all about soul winning. And if you have a weak stomach, you might not want to proceed. You may not want to go forward if, you, if you're faint of heart. Because this is not for the faint of heart. We're talking about dealing with the most, the most heinous and most evil individuals on this planet. It's time to expose them for what they really are. Um, Jesus didn't pull any punches. Right in front of everybody, he called the Pharisees vipers, snakes. Amen? Even John the Baptist, he said, Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come, you generation brood of vipers? John called them what they were too. And I will tell you right now, Donald Trump is a viper. He's a snake. He's a snake. And so isn't Hillary Clinton. Those are the two, Both of them are snakes. In fact, that's Autoborus. Democracy is Autoborus. The all-seeing eye, or whatever they call it there on the horse, the eye on the pyramid, what you're seeing right now in the election is Autoborus. That's what you're seeing. The serpent eating its own tail. And then the phoenix coming up out of the ashes. That's what you're seeing. They're destroying the Republic of the United States of America from which we stand. People, they're destroying on purpose, deliberately destroying the Republic. That's what they're doing. I wouldn't be surprised if Donald Trump has not been in bed with Hillary at some point. And vice versa, Bill has been in bed with, was it been in bed with his wife? That's what they do. They have these parties where they all get together and they sleep with one another and it's orgies and all the things that go on. And then they dress up and put their suits on and come into public light and act like they're just the most wonderful people when the people that are their victims they know who they are but they're terrified to tell and instead of saying who they are they call themselves Jane Doe or they call by their first first name and then the last name is Doe they're terrified because they threaten them with death they threaten to go after their families are you listening people it wouldn't be surprising to me if I don't receive a few uh, death threats before it's over. But there's no fear in love. Perfect love casteth out fear. Amen? It's time to be bold as a lion. John lost his head because he was bold. So we're going to back down now? Are you going to back down? A lot of times on this broadcast, I feel like I'm preaching to uh, swine. Am I casting my pearls before swine? And a lot of times I feel like I'm speaking to a brood of vipers. I don't know who you are out there. I don't know who's listening. But I know there are a few. There are a few out there that appreciate the truth. So we're going to keep on preaching the truth. We're going to keep on lifting our voice up and sounding the alarm, sounding the trumpet. i just telling you people, Brother Joseph's not going to back down. I am not going to back down. When you got people like Donald Trump that are violently, forcefully forcing themselves on little children, on 12-year-old girls... 
and the Bible tells me to forcefully, violently force my way into the kingdom, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm not going to back down. I must tell the truth. Again, for the sake of those out there that are being deceived. 